everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, so I'm the managing director here at the lab. Um, so I'm doing all the communications with uh, our doctors. Um, I manage production. Um, I've got my hand in, in every, every pot, really. Um, okay. All right. So let me, uh, let me just get started and thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, so we've got a really busy day. So right now we're going to be discussing shade selection. So our very own founder and master ceramist uh, will be going over how to take a correct shade and uh, shade selection and the photography and, and what the lab is looking for from a photography standpoint. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Gordana for those of you that don't know her. Um, she was originally trained in Europe and is both a CDT and an RDT. Uh, she's successfully grown her lab for over 35 years and has earned a reputation in the industry for her high-end aesthetic results uh, and her advanced implant experience. Um, so she worked with Dr. George, Ar George Zarb Sr. She was his uh, dental technician in the 80s and she was the first technician in all of North America to work on an implant case. So very first technician to touch an implant. Um, so she's got a wealth of experience in that as well. Uh, she was part of the original Ontario Study Club for Osteointegration Implant Dentistry. Uh, she is a co-leader of a SPEAR study club held here at the lab and is a member of the Pankey and Dawson Institute. Uh, she has been teaching at the Faculty of Dentistry at University of Toronto since 2008 and has earned the Demonstrator of the Year Award for the last five years running. Uh, she takes courses all around the world, but both lab and restorative, which gives her a stronger understanding of both the lab and restorative techniques. So with that, I will pass it off to Gordana and we will share my screen for the presentation. So let's get going here. Just... Give me a sec here. Technical glitch. There we go. Share my screen once more. Here we go. All right. And I will pass it off to Bordana now. Good afternoon all. I'm so glad and happy that you have joined this uh, uh, presentation. And I, my attention is uh, to uh, help everyone uh, understand a little bit better how to take the shade. And uh, uh, by doing that, uh, I'll give you the uh, strength and uh, uh, acceptance for the uh, especially like the, this presentation is in general taking the uh, selecting the shade but um my emphasis will be on the plant teeth and especially signal to central as we all know this is the hardest thing to, to do in our uh, profession and uh, uh, by getting more information it becomes very enjoyable and uh, um, makes a life uh, for the technician and the, and the doctor is much easier and producing happy patients. So, uh, I will start with this uh, slide. I don't want to scare any of you, but this is uh, my daily routine and uh, uh, those shade guides are much older than me, but I'm using from time to time. And uh, I don't want you to uh, get scared and say, wow, we need all those shades. No, I just wanted to show how many different shades people have. And my, I used to say it, and I'm saying it even today, uh, how many billions of people that many billions of shapes so we just need to be very creative and being able to see it so i thought that's something that we should really uh, see so the important aspect of uh, to select the shapes is natural light 
office lighting and wall colors. Uh, saying natural lighting is the, uh, uh, the best uh, because we don't have the influence from any artificial light, and especially if it's possible to have the north exposure where we don't have any of the uh, uh, shadows, it's, it's amazing, it's just amazing. I know it's not possible in mo most of the offices, uh, and I'm also visiting offices, but where we can help ourselves is with office lighting. It is very important to have uh, um, daylight uh, bulbs, light bulbs, which are really neutral color without any, like if you're looking at the lights, you can see that yellow, gray, he had, uh, uh, and that will influence the natural tooth. The teeth are translucent somewhat, some more the other less, but the teeth are absorbing the colors of surrounding area. The third very important part is uh, uh, the color of the walls in our uh, operatories. I prefer to have neutral colors, not like with in the past, it used to be very nice pastel colors, but that really made our life much harder. And uh, if you can dedicate one room for the shade uh, selection, it would be much easier and results will be great for you. I, I took this. Uh, uh, I'm just going to interrupt for a quick second. I, I know some of you are raising your hands. We will. Uh, you can either enter your question through the chat, and we will address all the questions at the very end. Um, so yeah, just we are. We see your hands. We see your questions, and we'll we'll take them at the very end. I choose this uh, Avita 3D shade guide, which is really uh, well done and uh, well done in in respect, uh, which shows the value the hue and the chroma. So uh, that's uh, uh, essential for any uh, shape taking uh, uh, of the patient's teeth. The, the, the value is showing you the brightness, the grayness. So uh, you can pick and choose then the shade tab, which it's going to be very close to the, the value that you pick. The hue is showing the color of the tooth, uh, the dentin color, gingival third, middle part. The chroma is the intensity of the colors. So we have yellow, orange, yellow, gray, and brown. So those three are the fundamental shades that we see in the patient's mouth. So, uh, it's much easier to start with those, just pick up the value, the value will tell you everything. Uh, I like to see the patient full, uh, I'm gonna go straight to the photography because uh, this really is uh, uh, going to show how important is uh, uh, taking the pictures uh, and rather not to take the pictures, you know, so we can see. And now, as I, my presentation goes uh, uh, on, I will explain why. So this way, we we see the face, we see the uh, uh, the lips, and uh, uh, um, it shows uh, the pos position, the shape, and uh, you know what we need to correct or just uh, do the. Like in this case, this patient chipped the, the tooth and that had to be redone. And uh, 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 so here we are seeing the position of the lower lip and uh, exposure, the full exposure of the teeth. It's, uh, I like to see uh, how it looks in the mouth. Like for me, it's very important to see the uh, neck, the shape and form of the neck, the height of the gingival. Uh, and uh, what uh, we are trying to do is just to mimic the natural tooth. So instead of making just the crown, we need to be especially uh, on the single central, we have to come uh, exactly the same with the shape and form beside the color. Uh, for the cases where you are going to do like, uh, 
for large or just the, the front, six or four teeth on the front, it's always good to show the, the profile of pictures so we can see the position of the incisal edge. Uh, and uh, also, as you can see here, we have a cuspid guidance. So gives us a little bit more information. And then when we get the models, either printed out or for the models, uh, we need to get the same uh, part of the functions as well. So here we have the temporary crown and uh, uh, also you can see the black uh, 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 back of the teeth by using the black shows us the uh, specially the incisal. You can see the different colors. You, you can see the mammalons, you can see the, the, the strength of the uh, translucency, and you can also see a nicely halo on the incisal edge. Removing that, which the next uh, uh, slide will show, it shows much less. So it's more precise when you have a black background, and uh, I'm using that daily when the patient comes to, to the lab. Uh, this is the white balance gray reference card. Uh, it is very helpful um, for the shape, position of the two uh, incisal edge. This is slightly off, the dentist did not place correctly, but it's better something than nothing. Uh, down the road in a, uh, in a later uh, pr presentation, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, white balance gray reference card. The, uh, uh, here I'm using the uh, lip uh, retractors. Uh, I like this one because it, it doesn't influence uh, the uh, picture because as you can see, the reflection is very small rather than the, uh, uh, the other one which, which are fully the full metal ones or I'm using the plastic one. So uh, there is much less reflection and uh, doesn't really uh, influence the colors. Uh, this is the way we should really take the shapes. The shape tab has to touch the incisal edge and it has to be as in the same path as the natural teeth. Uh, here we are showing like the, um, the hue which, you know, uh, the value, sorry, the value, which you can see it's much brighter. The shade guide is much brighter. So uh, we are going, I'm going back to that. It's first decide of the value and then go for the uh, uh, hue and chroma. For the uh, old porcelain crown, even for the uh, uh, zirconia, I'm getting a lot of questions from the dentist it is very important to take the stamp shade. The stamp shade will tell us uh, what type of uh, uh, material we are going to use. Uh, if we are using zirconia crown, it should be more higher opacity, medium opacity, high translucency. If we have uh, um, good color to back up, uh, the, the crown, then we can use, even you can see like on this crown here, on this tooth here, we have, oh, sorry, I moved it. Uh, you can see how much translucency is. So we have very good stump, then we can have more natural looking crown. If you don't have those, uh, uh, the shape guide is made by Ivoclar. You can use any of the shape tabs that you have with you. Uh, you, you just use A3 or A2 and C1 and D3, you know, any shades is better than nothing. So that is the essential. Same thing for the, the Emax. Uh, this was first introduced by Ivoclar when we use the Empress uh, crowns and really helped us making a great restoration. So please, uh, don't neglect the, the stamp shades. Um, here I have, um, like I map the shades. Um, I never asked my dentist to do that because if you send me the, sh the 
pictures, we can see it. And it's so very important. Here I go in details and uh, I'm using different uh, incisal and then sometimes I even create my own shade uh, tab. If I realize I can't get any of the shade uh, tabs that match the color of, especially the incisal, the, the translucency we have. So um, it gives us opportunity to get uh, very close and some uh, most of the time exactly the same translucency as the patient has. And as you probably all know, uh, more and more patients are bleaching their teeth. By doing that, we are getting a lot of uh, a different uh, type of translucency. So it's, it's very hard. This is for my internal um, uh, shading. Uh, so that's why I encourage every dentist to take the pictures because we're in, in the porcelain department, we have the uh, uh, monitors and we can really see uh, shades. So uh, your life is much easier than ours. So um, this case here is the final case. That's what we did. And uh, as you can see, the picture shows uh, it's not the best quality, but this was sent by the dentist after the insertion. Uh, you can see the placement of the incisal edge. And this crown really blended well. You know, like the, um, if you are looking very carefully, you can see also the, 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 the shape of the tooth is as well, it's good, the height of the contour. Uh, as we all know, and I know that you had the problems as I ha I'm having the problems with the single central, I always encourage the patient who comes to the lab and I take the shade, I'm telling them, you know, uh, please, if you're not happy, don't accept the crown because we can always correct. I'm talking mainly about the single, single tooth. As we all know, that's the hardest restoration to do. If we have like four or five or you know six anteriors, it's much nicer. But the point is that a lot of young people don't need to do all those uh, teeth. Uh, um, majority have the uh, single tooth uh, restoration. So. Uh, as hard as they are, I'm really truly enjoying them. And uh, um, I'm encouraging uh, every and each of you to, you can also use even your iPhone. Uh, for that matter now, the new iPhones are really very good. They give very good quality of the pictures and uh, uh, help us the, the, the term the colors. Uh, we are working with the dentists all over the country and uh, in order to get that uh, quality that we are all looking for and you know not being able to see right at the first uh, point is taking the, 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 the picture and sending to the lab. The communication is uh, uh, last quite a few years now is much better, much easier, and the success is extremely uh, good. And uh, uh, we are all getting happier. And uh, so um, with that said, I'm going to show you what not to do. Like uh, many times we receive the pictures like that. So. Uh, and you can see for yourself, if you're holding this way where the uh, gingival third is touching the incisal edge of the natural teeth, we can't see anything from it. So if you hold just incisal to incisal, we can see the, the value, the, the, the hue, the chroma. And I just put this on uh, in, in the presentation, this picture, because I'm just asking everyone to understand what the lab is going through. My dentist would say, but like, Hannah, I sent you the picture, but yes, the picture that's almost, I was not able to use it. So this is something what not to do.
Uh, saying that, I will pass now to Maya. She's going to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the uh, cameras, the settings, and uh, she's going to try to help you if you are using the uh, camera, what settings to, to have. And after that, I'm open for any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Hey, hello, everyone. Back to me. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just kind of give you top line uh, camera information. Um, I won't spend too much time because we could spend a lot of time discussing this. Um, so, you know, for those of you who have a DSLR or thinking about getting a DSLR, getting more involved in your dental photography, the first thing I would suggest is really take a, a dental photography course. And there, there are a lot of them that are offered. I know even through uh, a Tori over at Paul Mary, you know, he holds them, I think, annually twice a year. So really, you know, I, I encourage you to take a, a dental photography course, but I'll go over some of the top line um, uh, items here. So number one uh, is the flash. So, you know, the twin flash is really the best used for shade selection. Uh, we at the lab originally had a ring flash, which, which worked well. Um, but, you know, for those of you who may have a ring flash, uh, you probably notice when you check your photos that um, the concentration or the reflection of the flash especially when you're taking a shade of a, of a single central, it's right where you need to see the color. So you're trying to get a nice picture of the shade and the flash is bouncing off the exact spot that you're, you're trying to, to see. So when you're communicating with the lab for shade selection, something like a ring flash makes it really difficult for uh, the ceramist to see the shade. So when you have a twin flash, the lights are, are better distributed. They're coming from the sides and, and you, you get nice lighting but you're not running into the situation of um, reflection of light on, on the exact tooth that you're trying to uh, get a picture of. Um, so moving on, so for camera settings, these are adjustable um, for the most part. Uh, there is, um, you know, I, I would say a, a general um, start that you, you should use and then, you know, adjust from there. Um, so before I give you some of the regular camera settings that I would recommend, I'll just, for those of you who might not know uh, the different um, the different settings, I'll just explain them to you. So the exposure time here, what you see, the one over 40 is your shutter speed. And I do not recommend this for dental photography. Um, but this is basically the amount of time that your shutter is opening, opening and closing. So the lower the number, the slower that shutter speed is going to open and close. So um, this allows for a lower number will allow for your photo to be blurry because it will capture the movements of your hands holding uh, the photo. So if you're using, uh, you know, a lower shutter speed, you know, it's really recommended to use a tripod. But for dental photography, you know, your shutter speed should really be set to about uh, 1 over 125. Um, ISO, it measures the sensitivity of the image. Uh, so the lower the number, the less sensitive your camera is to light and the finer resulting um, grain that you'll see in your picture. Uh, the higher number means your sensor is more sensitive to light and this will allow you to use uh, your camera in a darker situation. So, you know, for, for dental photography, you know, there, there's different things that I've heard. I think a good place to start would be an ISO of 100. Uh, I've taken some dental photography courses where I was recommended to use 200. You know, I think it, you really kind of need to see in the space that you're taking the photos what works best for you. Uh, and so aperture, which is the last one, this f-stop, uh, aperture refers to the opening of the lens's diaphragm through which the light passes. So the lower the f-stop gives more exposure because they represent the larger apertures, while higher f-stop gives you less exposure um, because it represents a smaller uh, aperture. So, you know, I recommend starting at an f-stop of f-22. Uh, and that's the one that I really play with when I'm taking photos uh, the most. I don't really touch um, my shutter or my ISO, it's the f-stop. So depending on how closer or, or how far you're standing from your subject, uh, that's when I change it. So if you're standing quite a distance away, which, you know, if you're using a macro lens, which you should be for dental photography, you know, you, if you want to get a full face shot, like Rodana was saying earlier, you really need to step quite quite far back. So in that case, you know, you, you're going to have to change your f-stop to make sure you get the right lighting. And then as you move closer, you know, play with it. You know, start at f22, oh, you find it too dark, turn it down, you know, go to f18 and, and go from there. But every time you take a photo, step back, look at the photo and just see, is it too bright? Is it too dark? And adjust accordingly. Uh, so uh, now if you want to take your photography to yet another level, uh, there's something called the polarize. 
Uh, it's a cross polarization filter that makes it easy to eliminate unwanted reflections on the teeth. Uh, and it's used in combination with this white balance gray reference card. And you can see probably better in this photo uh, what it does. So, you know, the photo on the left is obviously without this uh, polarization filter and the one on the right is. So this really allows for better color mapping. Um, and when used in combination with the white balance gray reference card, you know, you really are going to be taking these, if you're taking these types of photos, you really need to be utilizing them in, in addition to a, um, uh, an application like Adobe Lightroom. Uh, and so that's where you, you import your photos and you can really calibrate your photos in your computer with your labs. So then there's no miscommunication on color, but something like this is really, you know, for really highly aesthetic cases. Um, and it, it's, it's a great tool and a couple of our dentists have it and, and use it and it's wonderful. That being said, do you have to have one of these? No, we, you know, most of our dentists don't and uh, we're still able to achieve really great aesthetic results and proper shade selections through re regular photography. Um, but, you know, if you go to um, uh, photomed.net, um, you know, they've got lots of, of uh, gadgets and accessories for your photography. And one of the new ones that they recently launched was, um, uh, attachments for your iPhone. So we're interested in trying it out. So, you know, we've been walking around with, uh, with big twin flashes when you know, we're down to a lot of patients out of the lab and, you know, sometimes it'd be cumbersome, you know, to be carrying all that around. Um, so, you know, we're interested in trying it as well. And it, it attaches to your iPhone. It's got twin flashes. So, you know, maybe that's something if you're not looking to invest in a big DSLR and a macro lens and lighting and all that, that might be a nice, um, a nice uh, tool to buy and try and try out. Um, so that's, just top line information that I, what we wanted to share with you. We wanna make sure we leave enough time for questions. Um, we can also provide some literature um, on any of the information here that we've shared that you want a little bit more information on. Uh, and if you wanna see some of our work, if you go to uh, our Instagram page uh, or profile at Gordana Dental, you'll see even the transition of our photography when we first started a few years back to our photography now. It's, it's changed with our, from going from the ring flash to the twin flash. Um, so you'll, you'll really see um, a difference. So I'm going to stop to share here. And I see we've got a couple of questions. So let's have a look. Uh, Dale, uh, how can I best do gingival soft tissue shades for you? So let's answer that one. So Gordana, how can you best do gingival soft tissue shades? Well, there is a couple of shade guides that you can purchase and the shape of the shade guides is like the, they have the shape of the neck. So you can put on and uh, 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 test with that. If you have for um, any of the reason, the uh, uh, even acrylic uh, uh, shade color or tissue color, you can just mark that because we do have the like you know, we can match like any lab can match to the to that shape. Thank you for attending this course.